right now, researchers are working to rebuild the population of sunflower sea stars. It's a species that used to flourish all along the West Coast. That is until disease nearly wiped them out. Leah Pazetti with our Environment Northwest team shows us the work being done to try to save the sea star population. There is one main focus at this University of Washington Friday Harbor Research Lab. So I'm just touching their little arm tips to wake them up. Here, it's all about sea stars. Yes. In this tank are full-grown adults. So these are our wild-caught adult stars that were caught in 2019. Vanessa Valdez is a research assistant here and shows off not just these large adults, but smaller, younger sea stars. There are varying sizes and they each come from different genetic crosses. All of these are each creating a lifeline. The reason that we're raising this specific species is because they're endangered. Uh, and the reason that they're endangered is because disease basically wiped them out about 10 years ago. Senior research scientist Jason Hoden says a decade ago, sea stars were everywhere along the West Coast. They were a very common species in a wide variety of habitats. That disease wiped them out basically everywhere, except for small populations in Washington and Alaska. Their loss causing a ripple effect. Sea stars tend to be predators. And what we've learned ecologists have learned over the last many decades is that predators are actually really, really important for maintaining biodiversity. When you lose top predators in ecosystems, the ecosystem goes haywire. So using that small population here as a base, UW is leading research in replenishing the big population. First, in 2019, they caught wild sea stars here in their natural habitat. So there are these pilings and there's a bunch of like organisms that grow on the pilings. Then bred them each year, creating a new generation of sea stars. The scientists start with tens of thousands of larvae. We've got these buckets um, with rotating paddles to keep the larvae flowing around. After a few years, that dwindles to just a couple dozen, simply because they get too big and there's not enough space here. Our sort of eye on the prize, as it were, is to be thinking about the possibility of reintroducing this species into areas like California where they've disappeared. So. What we're trying to do on a small scale is sort of give an idea of how one could maybe develop a larger facility in a place like California to raise thousands of these stars in, for possible release back into the wild. And the larvae they don't have space for in the lab, they release into the sea. Bon voyage! Even though the chance of survival is low. Hope they make it. They give them a shot. And after years of growth under these watchful eyes, the larger sea stars will eventually also be released with the goal of rebuilding this crucial species. We like to think that our research is basically contributing to increased knowledge about the sort of basic biology of a really important species that is on the brink of extinction and also finding out information to help restore that species in their natural environment. Scientists have yet to release any of those lab-grown sea stars into the wild. They plan to do that this summer. Also in the works, federal support. Right now, sea stars are being considered to be listed as threatened under the Endangered Species Act. A decision on that is expected to come this summer. For Environment Northwest, I'm meteorologist Leah Pizzetti.